assuming that the timing from the discs to reels was exact. Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for talking to me today about A Black Rift Begins to Yawn. I love that title. Thanks. <laughs> and is it Sarah Tops? Is that how, is, how do you say your name? You said it. That's it. That is amazing. Yep. It's got to be a whole story behind that too, huh? It's a long <laughs> one. Yep. <laughs> well, Matthew, let's start with you. Uh, when did this love for HP Lovecraft begin? Uh, she got me a book when we started dating of, uh, HP Lovecraft, I believe, if I remember it right. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a funny question because we had a conversation about whether she introduced me to Clive Barker or HP Lovecraft, because I had been obsessed with one. So then she got me the other, but we weren't sure which, and that's, we, I kind of put part of that into this story because there's these, the controversy between like colors of books that they were reading. So that question kind of ties into uh, a mystery, which is, I don't know which came first, but uh, I think, I'm pretty sure she got me a book of his work and uh, I kind of just dived into it and I read everything he had written by like within a year. And Sarah, tell me about discussing your character with Matthew, because this is a kind of a, a wild film. So uh, did you understand everything from the beginning or was there a lot of discussions about your character and what was going on? We kind of went into it. The story definitely evolved as we were working on it. So we went into it with the visuals really heavily planned and there wasn't a lot of dialogue. So we kind of sat down and talked through the, the mood and kind of what we were there to do. But other than that, it was very organic when we got on set, we kind of just dropped into that world. And there were a lot of things we were expecting, a lot of things we didn't expect to happen. So it was definitely guided by the space and the crew getting together as we kind of worked on this piece. And Sarah Tops, listening to Sarah's uh, answer there, was this a project where you put your complete trust into Matthew because it was such an experimental film? Um, I put my complete trust in everybody on the crew because I've never been in a film before. Um, when they asked me to be in this film, I thought I was agreeing to maybe have a line in a scene or um, maybe be in the background. And until they gave me a copy of the first script that I realized that I had a agreed to be a lead role in a film and I had already agreed. So I was kind of um, in it regardless. <laughs> so um, they were explaining everything to me from why they were setting the room up this way to the lighting and how you manipulate lighting to sort of differentiate the times of day and um, they very graciously walked me through every step of this film from day one until the very last day, so. That's fascinating. And, and Matthew, you know, the movie's about distortion of time, memory, and space. Did you uh, do a lot of in-camera effects? Yeah, yeah, tons. Most yeah. of them are in-camera. Are they? Yeah, tell me, walk me through that, because usually everything's done in post-production. In-camera effects is an old-school technique, isn't it? Yeah, both. So Lila Stryker, the director of photography, and I, and even Chaz Gentry, our gaffer, um, we all came from a film background, um, like shooting film stills, uh, some of us developing our own film, all of the live action stuff I had made up until this movie I had shot on film stock. So we all, I think, kind of have this uh, sort of fetish with this aesthetic of uh, trying to do as much as you can optically and then punching that up in post if you need to. But uh, yeah, we, we had, I think we have like a hundred filters of different colors and gradients and all this kind of stuff. So we had designed pretty much how we wanted the whole thing to look well before we got there and shot it. And it's, we're all kind of, aesthetic junkies in that way. So for us, it was a lot of fun to just sit down for weeks and sort of build the look of the movie so that we knew when we got there exactly sort of what we wanted to do. 
And Sarah, since I just realized that this is Sarah Top's first film, was there much rehearsal? Did you kind of work closely together to interpret your characters and to uh, you know, go through all the different scenes? Because this is not a conventional film by any means. Oh, sorry, <laughs> which Sarah? Um, we we ran lines a few times together. Um, we didn't we we didn't do a lot of heavy rehearsal. I actually prefer not to. Um, I think it kind of leaves it open for new ideas and new choices when you're actually on the set. So I always try to run lines really monotone and not make any choices until the day. It's just a lot more fun to be surprised as you go along. And, you know, Ceratops, this is kind of trial by fire, I and mean, this is not a conventional film by any means. So how was the experience in your first film? Um, I thought it was incredible. Um, very challenging. I was, um, they were, again, very gracious in sort of picking the dates that we could film based on when I was not in school. You froze a lot there. <laughs> oh, sorry. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, getting the slam dance was amazing. We were... Uh, we found out the week before Thanksgiving or leading up to that. So that was very exciting because we had also just moved and we're dealing with all the turmoil like everyone else of 2020. So that was a that was a bright sort of light toward the tunnel towards the end of the year, I think. Well, congratulations on a very bizarre film. I love things that challenge <laughs> your mind and your senses and that it did it definitely. And great performances by you, Sarah, and you too, Sarah Top. So thank you for joining me and good luck at uh, Slam Dance. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, Thank appreciate you. it.